Hey everybody, it's Jamie from No Getting Off This Train, and in today's video, I have four easy gluten-free recipes that you can try next week. Now, I was actually surprised to see that so many of you are eating gluten-free for many different reasons, whether it's from celiac disease, maybe it's for other medical reasons, or maybe you're just sensitive to it and you feel better without it. And a lot of you have been requesting more gluten-free recipe ideas. So I'm trying to go through everybody's suggestions. I did uh, lentils the other day. I'm doing gluten-free now. I know there's been some more requests for low carb and that is coming in the future as well. Now, not to get into huge specifics here, but going gluten-free basically means that you're avoiding all uh, wheat products. So all your breads, tortillas. Now, obviously you can have gluten-free versions of those things, but you want to avoid all of those bread items. I personally am not gluten-free. However, I did do a Whole30 back in 2019 and did avoid gluten for a while. I'd say maybe about a month or so after that to see if it made a difference. So I'm somewhat familiar with the lifestyle. And today I've got four easy ideas for you. One is a breakfast and then three are dinners. And hopefully you'll get a few good ideas out of them. So let's take you into the recipes and show you what to make. This first recipe is pumpkin baked oatmeal. Now, do you think I could get away without doing a pumpkin recipe? I'm actually doubling this because both John and I were going to eat this for breakfast. So whatever is here is double, but the recipe that's in the description is for a single batch. Now, baked oatmeal is so easy because all you do is mix everything together, basically like you would like pancakes or muffin mix or whatever, put it in a pan and then you bake it. So you start off with all of the wet ingredients like the pumpkin and the milk and the eggs and the honey. I used honey, but I think you can use maple syrup as well. And then after you mix all that together, you add the dry ingredients. One thing you have to remember about being gluten-free is that oats in and of itself are naturally gluten-free. However, a lot, a lot of times these are made in the same facility that also has gluten products. So if you need to go gluten-free for medical reasons, definitely choose the certified gluten-free oats. The ones that I have are just regular. So like I said, you put all the dry ingredients together and um, I got halfway through mixing before I remembered, oh yeah, I was supposed to add some flaxseed. It's not in the recipe, but I like to add it to everything I bake now just for some extra omega-3s. And it doesn't add any like flavor or anything to the recipe. It doesn't mess it up or anything. Just adds a little bit extra. I added some walnuts to mine, about a half cup, well really a fourth cup if you're doing a regular recipe. If you're allergic to nuts, you can leave them out. You could also add chocolate chips and stuff to them, or maybe some blueberries or other kind of berries. But I put these into eight by eight casserole dishes flatten them out nice and neat, and then put them in the oven for, I believe it was like 35 minutes or so, just enough to get it all um, hardened and set. I made these serve six. So each one I cut into six pieces. I put them in like containers and put them in the fridge for later. You could eat this by itself, or you could have it with some sort of a protein like cottage cheese or Greek yogurt or sausage links or something. I had cottage cheese and a banana. And here's the nutrition information as well. This stuff is so good. It was so soft and so delicious. This next recipe, I don't even know if it's really a recipe. It's just showing off what you can do with ingredients. I'm making chicken burrito bowls. So all I did was put some chicken in a slow cooker with a bunch of spices like cumin, um, garlic powder, salt and pepper. I even put in some like nacho cheese seasoning. I cooked it for about six or seven hours on low. And I'm using forks to shred this, but you know, you could also use your KitchenAid mixer with the paddle setting and that will mix or shred your chicken in like 30 seconds. It's awesome. Since I only had one chicken breast, I just did it by hand. I added it back into the slow cooker to let all of the juices kind of mix in with it. Now for burrito bowls, for a gluten-free burrito bowl, 
I mean, rice and beans are naturally gluten-free. So I cooked some brown rice in my rice cooker while this was going on. And then I had a can of black beans as well. I also roasted some sweet potatoes in the oven for a little bit. You know, that I, now that I think about it, I don't know if I had beans. Maybe it was just the rice and the sweet potatoes, but you could add beans if you wanted to. Black beans, pinto beans, kidney beans, whatever. And I always put a bed of lettuce underneath all of my, my taco salad stuff just to add some extra veggies and add extra food. But the sweet potatoes and the rice add lots of extra fiber to it. Um, I put some queso fresco on top. If you are dairy free, you could always add like avocado or guacamole or leave all of it off. But we do burrito bowls like once per week at least, maybe even once every couple weeks because they're just so easy. It's a really good way to get in like all your protein and vegetables in one dish. My next recipe is a Mexican black bean and sweet potato casserole. Now I was going to make this later in the evening and I figured it would be just a really good idea to pre-chop all of my vegetables. So I chopped up three sweet potatoes. It was about a pound and then one green bell pepper and one onion. I diced them all up, stuck them in a container, and that way, when it came time to cooking, all of it was already done and it made it so convenient. When it came time to actually cooking dinner, I put a little bit of olive oil in a pan and then put all of the vegetables in there. And I let it saute for probably 10 minutes or so. I wanted the sweet potatoes to get slightly soft and pro tip, you may want to cook them a little bit longer because mine didn't cook uh, as well as I wanted them to in the oven. After that, I added a can of diced tomatoes and the black beans and a bunch of seasonings like garlic powder, chili powder, cumin, salt and pepper. Let that simmer for another five or 10 minutes or so. I actually had to get a bigger pan um, because I am a really poor judge in how much fits in a pan. While that was cooking in an eight by eight casserole dish, I added a half cup of salsa to the bottom, kind of spread it around. It's kind of like a lasagna in a way because you're layering it. So the first layer is salsa and the second layer is a tortilla. Use gluten-free tortillas if you need to. You're just taking one and rip it into pieces in order to make it fit inside the dish. After you put the one layer of tortilla on there, you'll take about half of the black bean mixture and flatten that on top. Next is another layer of salsa and then another tortilla and then the mixture. And then I topped mine with a little bit of cheese. It was like a mixture of cheddar and Colby Jack. Uh, feel free to use whatever type of cheese you want or leave it off if you prefer to be dairy free. But this goes into the oven for th about 30-ish minutes, 30 to 45. You wanna make sure that the sweet potatoes are soft and fully cooked. Like I said, mine weren't fully, fully cooked. I actually made this recipe serve four, which is a lot of food. You could make this serve six if you wanted to and maybe serve it with some chips on the side or maybe a salad or something, but we got a lot of food for, uh, for serving four. As you can see, it's pretty carb heavy, but you get that when you make a vegetarian meal. And the final recipe is just a simple turkey chili. Chili is pretty much always gluten-free because you don't typically add any gluten containing stuff in it. I started with a pound of ground turkey and a little bit of olive oil, cooked that for a couple minutes, and then I diced up an onion and a green bell pepper and I added it to the pan to let them kind of cook and saute for a few minutes. Once again, I am a poor judge of how much actually goes in to pans.
Once the meat finished cooking, I drained it just a little bit and then added it to my slow cooker along with some of the other ingredients. I had two cans of diced tomatoes and the recipe actually said to use fire roasted. Um, Aldi didn't have it. Uh, the regular ones were just fine. I also added the one can of black beans and a bunch of seasoning. I'm talking like three tablespoons of chili powder and then some cumin. I had salt and pepper and I put some garlic in there too. I probably should have cooked it along with everything, but it still worked out. Now, and I also added about two cups of chicken broth. Now you can cook this on low for eight-ish hours, or you can do what I did and cooked it on high for three hours because I had something to do that night and I needed to get this done quick. You could make this chili serve four or six. If you make it serve four, it is a huge, huge serving. Uh, so you can easily split it into six and serve it with like some gluten-free cornbread or something. So I put one into a bowl and then the other ones were in containers to save for later. Hopefully this has also shown you that you do not have to spend a lot of money to eat gluten-free. I mean, yes, you can buy the pre-packaged like bread mixes. You can buy all the gluten-free breads and tortillas. That does get expensive, but you can take advantage of all of the cheap, naturally gluten-free items. Things like beans and rice, fruits and vegetables are naturally gluten-free as well as most meats. So as long as you're focusing around like those specific items, you're gonna be saving yourself a lot of money. I do have a few more gluten-free recipes down below. I did another video on it. And I've got a couple more recipes I'd like to share with you. So make sure you check in the description for all of those recipes. If you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and do so right now. And then like this video and ring that bell and that way you'll be notified when more videos like this come out as well as whatever else you suggest to me and my grocery hauls, recipes, and meal planning tips. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you later. Did you know I offer one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching? Whether your goal is to lose weight, eat healthier, or just want to know how to get started, I can help. You can schedule a free weight loss discovery call by using the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I can't wait to chat with you.